Part of the reason we went to the Turkin Tazgan Nur Lake, which is also known as the White Lake, is so we could go to the Korgo Volcano. One water. One water. Two. Two. Two water. Three. <laughs> it's vodka? Two. Water. One. Water. Jen's water. How do you say water? water? No. Oh, it's vodka. Yeah, this is vodka. went out of our way to get to this lake just to see this volcano. Going to it, it was really cool. It wasn't a big volcano. It wasn't like absolutely massive or anything. It was definitely an older, worn down volcano. And, but the view was spectacular. You know, we hiked to the top of it, got to walk around the whole rim of the volcano. I never went down in it and just just didn't feel like going all the way down to the bottom of this thing. It looked like it was a pretty horrendous hike all the way down and back out, just to say I did it. But I could see where our ride was taking us and I could see what we were gonna do and everybody really had a, a nice time, you know. It will, you know, our crew, film crew is a big part of what I do, you know. I, I take guys with me to do this and I think they enjoyed it, we enjoyed it. It was, again, this isn't just about riding that bike, it's about having a lifetime experience. And I think I take away from most of my riding the lifetime experience aspect of it. The bike is just a way to get to places that nobody else can get to. I mean, there, it's very rare you're going to see people where I end up going on a bike. As I finished up, you know, the walking around the volcano and everything, and you know, it's, it's what they call a park, and the locals, Mongolian people go to this park, and they walk, and they hike, like anybody has a park. It's just a little bit really unique and what made this park unique and this volcano unique is you have little stands and, but it was interesting I walked up to one lady's little stand and I'm like hey I want to get a bottle of water and she hands me a thing and next thing you know the guy's like no 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 it's not water it's vodka. This is a volcano a park type thing with the trails and you can see all the little vendors that set up the little stands around here but at this stand at the entrance of it we've got uh, Yak wine, vodka, gin, juices, jam, and dumplings. What a unique combination. Oh, and party peanuts. Very nice. What a unique entrance to a park. <laughs> to explain it's almost impossible. To see it was incredible. To think it, conceive it before I ever saw it, no way. I don't know why, but on this trip, Josh had numerous problems with the bike he was on. First, it was a Kickstarter that popped. And then, as we're leaving the, the, the lake here, the White Lake, his, his gear shifter broke. And 
We were able to get it so we could get it back on and everything, but one ingenious thing they did, because we didn't have a spare gear shifter with us, is they took a, a nice string and they tied it to the, to the bike and then they tied it to this gear shifter. So when this gear shifter would fall off, that string would act as a leash and catch that gear shifter so we wouldn't lose it while we were riding. It was okay, we got it fixed, we did what we needed to do, but it, was, it just was a continuous problem. And the only thing, we couldn't come up with a real solution for it. So we did what we could, we shimmied it as well as we could with whatever we could. But Josh is a big boy and he hammers down on those gears, you know, it's to shift and go up and down. So it was a real, it was a real, it was a problem. Shop for Cool Skin Bali Club is never leave home without one, man. I've been using it on this trip now for five days. Best thing to keep the dust out of your mouth, keep your head warm, hold your earplugs in if you're gonna listen to music. It's great underneath the helmet, super thin, very lightweight, mesh, wicks and breathes. Definitely a good thing to have on a ride, especially here in Mongolia, huh? Comes up over the nose, protect your nose. Goggles on, you don't even know it's there. It's great. Out in the middle of Mongolia today, we came across a uh, unique group of individuals who are overlanders. Overlanders are people who take modified Range Rovers, Land Rovers, Toyota Land Cruisers, what have you, and they modify them into living vehicles, four-wheel four drive off-road vehicles, and they, ride, they drive them around the world, and uh, they're, they're pretty souped up modified vehicles. Uh, coming across this group out here in the middle of nowhere was pretty interesting. From what I can tell, it looks like they started in Belgium, but I think they're from Holland. Don't quote me on that. If you're watching this video, I, I don't remember if you're from Belgium or Holland, I'm sorry. Um, but it looks like they started in, in around Rotterdam or Belgium in that area. But it's cool to see them, man. It's, it, you can, they drove all the way from there to Mongolia. And so that's, it's pretty cool to see this and understand that you know, people everywhere doing crazy stuff like this. You know? So here we ride into a village called the Shine Eider Village, and I have no idea what I'm getting myself into again, as usual. We're just kind of at the mercy of whatever's there. They're like, here's the hotel we're staying at, and I'm like, it doesn't look like a hotel, but then nothing in this area does because pre-1990s, it was all Russian villages, and Mongolia hasn't done a lot to change any of the Russian aesthetics of the area. So we, we stay in this place and we literally stayed in an old Russian military hotel depot type thing. And we got in this room and it had a giant iron furnace right in the middle of it. And I mean, it was massive. And the beds were just like a steel frame bed with some springs. 
no inside showers, no showers whatsoever, no inside plumbing. We actually use the people, people next door's outhouse to go to the bathroom. Yeah, it was one crazy ass experience, man. It was, man, I felt like I was definitely in communist 1920s, pre-World War I hotel style. 